So I've got my console over here, but my digital audio workstation for the broadcast is over there. What am I gonna do to get the audio over here to over here? Today, we're gonna explore some options so that you can get your audio from there to here and here to there. Rhyming sound techs are everywhere. In this video, we're gonna talk about all the different options you have for getting your audio from your console to your digital audio workstation, and then also to your streaming computer because it's gotta go somewhere too. If everything could all be in the same room, that'd be one thing and we could get it hooked up no problem. But you wanna be able to mix broadcast in a quiet space so that you're not overcome by the intensity of the front of house mix, even if you're in headphones. So not only do we have to get the engineering part right, we have to get the distance so that we can get to a quiet spot. And then the returning audio needs to get embedded with the video, which means it needs to go someplace else too. But hey, if it was easy, they wouldn't need us. Hey, if you're new here, my name's James, and I help church sound tech save the day by eliminating distractions in church audio. If you're passionate about making church sound great so that people can focus on Jesus, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post new content. Now it is possible to get audio to your digital audio workstation using an analog split and separate preamps going into your computer. Now that's not the cheapest option, but if you already have some of that infrastructure in place, that might be one way to do it. But if you don't have that in place, I highly doubt that you'll take that road. It's a lot easier to get a Cat 5e or Cat 6 cable back and forth than it is to get multi-pair audio. Four options, but there are probably more, are Dante, Matty, AES 50, and AVB for you PreSonus users out there. Which network protocol works best depends on what type of infrastructure you already have. If you're using an X32 or an M32, you already have AES 50 built in. But if your console has Dante already, that might be your easiest route. MADI might also be your protocol of choice. And for that, we have to look at what we're gonna do on the computer side. Now, RME has a MADI face USB interface that'll take the multi-channel MADI signal and convert it to USB so that you can plug it into your computer. Clark Technic, which is the same company that owns Behringer and Midas, they've got their AES50 USB interface. For Dante, you can use virtual sound card, but it eats up a lot of DSP. So I actually recommend getting the PCIe card to be your ethernet port for Dante. But James, can't you just come out of the console with its multi-channel USB interface? Well, yeah, you can do that. But the problem with USB is that it only should go about 10 feet. Now there are extenders that you can use, but those aren't really going to handle the bandwidth of multi-channel audio. And you don't wanna have dropouts, especially in the middle of a service. Now, if USB is your only option for getting into a digital audio workstation, I've got a workaround for that too. And it's a little MacGyver-ish, but hey, MacGyver made it work. What you do is keep the computer at front of house and then run a pair of XLR cables to a remote room that's quiet where you can actually mix it. Then you can use remote control software to control the computer remotely and get your real-time audio feed right there for your studio monitors or your headphones. If your DAW is on a PC, you could use Parsec. Otherwise, Chrome Remote Desktop works pretty good too. Now I gotta warn you, I'm not an IT guy and I don't even like to pretend to be. Any of these remote control solutions can fail, and that's a pickle not even Benny from the Sandlot can outrun. So if you like one of these solutions and you think you'll try it, go ahead and hit thumbs up to let me know. Or if you hate all these solutions, go ahead and hit thumbs down. I'll take it like a man. Then tell me down in the comments which one you think you'll try, or why all of these are a ridiculous solution. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Now that we have the multi-channel audio to our workstation, we have two more problems that we have to overcome. The first is monitoring. How do we hear in real time what it is that we're mixing? And two, how do we get it to the streaming computer or switcher or camera or however else you embed your audio and video? I'm just gonna say one of those for the rest of the time, not all three because it's a mouthful. Even more of a mouthful than digital audio workstation, although it doesn't quite feel quite as ridiculous as saying DAW. Now, if you think your only option is to monitor off of YouTube or Facebook when you're live streaming, I'm just gonna let you know right now that's a bad idea. You can't properly mix when there's a long delay between hearing something making a change, and then hearing if it actually worked. It would drive me crazy if I tried to do that. To me, that's like fighting an uphill battle covered in Crisco. So here's a summary of the challenges that we face. We have two destinations. Some digital audio workstations or audio drivers only allow you to use one interface at a time, and the other computer might be far away. Some DAWs allow you to choose two different audio interfaces. So you could choose one for your inputs and one for your outputs. That would be a pretty simple solution in most cases. 
add a four channel audio interface and you're good to go. You can have two of your outputs for your monitors, two of your outputs going to the stream. If you can't do that for whatever reason, there's a free VST plugin from Voxengo called Recorder. It will allow you to record the output of your master bus or send it to another MME audio interface. Now on the Mac, there is an option for an aggregate audio device, but I've never gotten this to work really well for me. If you've gotten it to work, put it in the comments and even shoot me an email to let me know how you did it and I'll share it with the rest of the crew. Now, if you're using Dante, you could use a virtual sound card on your streaming computer or Dante Via to receive the signal from the digital audio workstation. If you don't wanna do that, you can get a simple two channel output from Dante to XLR analog, then run that into an audio interface or into your camera, and then you should be good to go that way. Another way to get your audio back to the camera might be to use the same audio protocol that you used coming into the digital audio workstation to go back to the console and use two of those physical outputs to go to your switcher. One church that was in the same situation decided to use a pair of outputs on the remote preamps from their digital console to go to a room behind the stage where they were mixing their broadcast. This way they got to use the same interface in and out and the cable run was still really short. Now here's another set of audio over IP options that you can use other than Dante. Listen to by Audio Movers is a way to send your mix over the internet with a lossless or compressed audio format. This could also work to get your monitor mix on a computer that you're remoting in from. There's a monthly fee to use it, but what you're getting is simplicity. Another solution that's caught my eye for PC users is the VB Audio Voice Meter app and their associated VBAN audio over IP solution. With it, you can send and receive an audio stream over a local network. Plus it's donationware, so you can try it for free and then pay people with how thankful you are for it. And remember, the worker is worthy of his wages. So don't be stingy when it comes to stuff that's free at first. It's not really free. They put work into it and it would be good to donate. Basically, you have a virtual mixer, voice meter, that captures the audio from your digital audio workstation and then uses VBAN to transfer it to the other computer that's also running VBAN and voice meter. Now, another really exciting thing that I would love to try is their VBAN receptor app on Android devices. It lets you send the signal to your phone and listen there. Suddenly, you can monitor what it really sounds like on a mobile device in real time. Now, if you're handy with IP addresses and networking, let me know so we can set up a test of this. I would love to actually see it in action, not just have a concept out there. Now, as a short disclaimer, there are so many options here that I'm bound to have missed one or two. So if you have a solution that I didn't cover, go ahead and drop it down in the comments below. And I and all the other sound ninjas out there, thank you. If you want a clear path on taking your church's stream to the next level, I have a free guide for you. It's called How to Lead Your Church Audio Stream Team. You can find it through the link down in the description below. Don't forget to like this video, hit thumbs up, share it with a friend, and be sure to hit subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. If you wanna check out more stuff on live streaming, I got a playlist up here, and we'll see you back here next time. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time at Attaway Audio.